In this video, um, I would like to talk about the kitchen sewing table and bringing art to the table. Um, I'm going to grab a face mask. Um, many of you may know that I'm an artist and that a lot of um, a lot of the things I do interact um, in a sense where they spill over. So it's hard for me to do a sewing project without adding art. It's hard for me to do art without thinking what would this be like if it were stitched. And I think a lot of households, especially households that have children, um, have to clear off their kitchen table and make room for some kind of an art project at one time or another. So um, what I want to talk about is um, for several months I've been trying to find the best way to do my artwork. Um, I'm a pen and ink artist, but I also work in oil, oil pastel, um, chalk, chalk pastels, soft pastels, acrylics, um, mainly pen and ink, graphite. Um, and so what I've been trying to do is find a happy medium, a happy support um, medium that I can use with all those different um, types of artwork. So in one of the earlier videos, I talked about making paper towels with a zigzagger. And in the video, you see my 1591 set up with an automatic zigzagger. And I am doing just that. I am, it's hard to see because I'm using pink thread on um, a red, white, and blue fabric. But right now I have three rows of decorative zigzag stitching there, and I'm going around in a rectangle. Now, um, this is what I'm going to do with this. This is kind of an oversized one because of the fabric. And the reason um, you're seeing this fabric is because I had made a face mask for someone and used this fabric and the fabric shrunk unbelievably almost by an inch either way so the fabric of this type that I had left I said well I'm not going to use it for face mask and the other fabric I used for the same person both fabrics are marked 100% cotton and the two fabrics shrunk when washed completely differently. Now, I pre-wash, um, but then I hand wash. I don't throw everything in the machine. And uh, the person who had the masks uses a machine and sometimes a dryer. So when you're sewing, you have to think of all those different things that might come into it. Um, so all of that also had to go into can I paint on this? Can I draw on this? And this is, like I said, uh, um, if you back up and see the fabric from a distance, it's like a light to medium tone because all of the little red, white, and blue, uh, red and blue stars kind of blend in. Um, but at the same time, because I make quilts for veterans, this is actually going to be a perfect fabric to make reusable paper towels with for one of the quilt sets. But this is where the art comes in. And now you're going to see a little bit of a sloppier piece, or it might be considered sloppier piece. Um, so some of these, I was doing some in green for March and St. Patrick's Day. Most of the paper towels I'm going to make are obviously going to be out of fabric and they're going to be muslin and muslin lets you do a lot of different um, ink techniques we're going to talk about pen and ink now on here this is becoming my paper this is my paper so the other day I had a bunch of stuff I needed to write down and I wrote it down on a paper towel and then I washed it to see which is more permanent. I've got Kohenor inks, um, Schaefer inks, Noodler's inks, uh, different types of graphite. And so this is how I am going to be bringing art to the sewing table. 
I am going to be making pages. Here's another one um, with just plain straight stitching. And you go around whether, so this would be without a zigzag. You just go around in a rectangle. Now this one is actually going to be all about my dog Coco coming to Cape Cod when I adopted her about ten and a half years ago. And I'm just going to write the story on a paper towel. And I can use a dip pen and either handmade iron gall ink, sumi ink, India ink, or I can use, um, these are what I have out right now. This is a regular, um, fairly inexpensive fountain pen that takes washable refills. So this is great if you plan on washing your paper towels with a little bit of bleach, you can you can bet that most of the ink is going to come out. You will end up with shadows of words or designs or whatever. This is a vintage Schaefer that has vintage, no, I'm sorry, Noodler's permanent ink in it. And um, when I washed that, that's this right here. and it didn't come out. So that's Noodlers, which they say on paper, more or less permanent when dry. Well, it's also more or less permanent on muslin. A Schaefer No Nonsense um, that also has permanent Noodlers ink in it, and a Kohenor Rapidograph that has um, FW acrylic ink in it. And when I used that, I got a little bit more of a bleed effect there's just a little tree thing, tree circle. But all of these work wonderfully on this fabric. And um, you can do this yourself as an artist for your sketch pads. You know, I use four by six sketch pads by Aquabee Super Deluxe, and they stop making the four by six size I like. So this ties in with, gee, I really can't get the paper I like. And now I'm going to switch everything to fabric. Then these are two uh, lead holders that are two millimeters. And one has um, HB lead in it, which is like a number two pencil. And the other has 2B lead in it, which is like a Dixon Ticonderoga number one soft. It's almost the same as that. A little bit different because uh, Dixon uses, you know, obviously it's a grade one, but the, the 2B is um, fairly close to that. Now these, um, this is, uh, the top one is HB, and I, I know they're hard to see. The second one is 2B, and the bottom one is 4B. And with graphite, it depends on how hard of a pressure you use. The harder um, leads are going to leave a thinner, more distinct line, but the softer leads are actually going to work into the fabric a little bit more. So you can use some experimenting. Um, if you draw on... Um, if you, I'm going to do words and writing and, you know, very few pictures, but if you use a graphite or a washable ink and then wash these in bleach, most of it will come out and they're completely reusable. If you don't do that, if you use a permanent ink, um, then these can be your sketchbook and at the end you can just stitch them together and have permanent sketchbooks. So I think it's a wonderful way to use inexpensive fabric. I had bought some muslin when it was on sale at joanne.com. Now it's back up to $2.99 a yard, which still isn't bad. You get eight pieces out of a yard if you cut them four inches wide um, by 18 inches long and doubled. 
um, so fold the, the 36 inch wide yard, fold it in half, and then cut it into uh, four inch strips. So you can bring to your kitchen sewing table the ability to sit here, like what I've been doing, plan on doing, I plan on making three pages a day at the least. And then um, rolling them up, you know, they call quilting fabrics jelly rolls now. You can roll them up like a jelly roll and stick them in a coffee mug or something. And you always have paper towels. And you always have paper is the point. Um, and depending on watercolors would probably blend in. Um, I'm trying to think if I have one of my ink rags around. When Being a pen and ink artist, you're constantly wiping off your pens. And depending on the fabric, sometimes it blobs, sometimes it washes out, sometimes it doesn't. You may end up with a background like this. And then you could use it for graphite. So you can do some experimenting yourself, but this is also good for kids with chalk. Crayon on muslin is wonderful. Um, sidewalk chalk will, will come out less easily than chalkboard chalk. Um, the Yarka pastels, I had those out this morning. I may, I haven't opened the one box yet, so I may open them and do, um, you know, professional level pastels on muslin and work around the lines or design the lines of stitching, um, stitch it into sections and do miniature paintings. You can use your imagination. Anybody at any age can do this. And so all you have to do is make your paper towels, make your paper and four inches wide, 18 inches long, doubled. And if you wanna make fancy paper, you use a vintage singer with a zigzagger attached. Combine the art of stitching with all of your art, bringing art to the table.